Hey guys, it's me. It's Diane Cunningham Ellis and I have boundaries on my mind and so I decided to jump on and do a quick little mini training. It might be not quick, but I did go and grab what we call the Boundaries Bible, which is this book that has been around forever and ever and ever and ever. And it is Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. If you don't have it, everybody in the whole world needs it. And uh, they have been around a while. Oops. They have been around a while. Look at all those books. Look at all of those books. Uh, there is the book Boundaries Work, this one, Boundaries Workbook. Boundaries in dating, boundaries in marriage, boundaries with kids, boundaries that heal. No, changes that heal. Hiding from love, how people grow. Anyway, it goes on and on. And so boundaries are very simply, it's like a little protective bubble around you that um, we have boundaries with feelings, attitudes and beliefs, behaviors, values, limits, choices, desires, love, talents, thoughts, uh, consequences. What's within my boundaries? Let's see. Hold on. Hang with me. God and boundaries, good in, bad out, invisible property lines and responsibilities. So this book has stories and examples and all such things. There's a lot of boundary myths. Let me just read you a few. Number one, if I set boundaries, I'm being selfish. Okay, they say it straight up right here. And chime in below if you have this book. Uh, I know I have a couple copies. I had it already from when I was a counselor. And then my ex-mother-in-law kept sending me copies in the mail. And I kept thinking, I already have that. And you might need it as well. <laughs> so, anyway, myth number one, if I set boundaries, I'm being selfish. Myth number two, boundaries are a sign of disobedience. Myth number three, these are straight from the book. If I begin setting boundaries, I will be hurt by others. Okay, let's keep going. Myth number four, if I set boundaries, I will hurt others. Let me know if you have this book. Myth number, oops, I missed number five. Myth, oh, here we go. Myth number five, boundaries mean that I am angry. No, when we don't have boundaries, here's the deal. When we don't have boundaries, we get taken advantage of. And then we're resentful, and then it's the secret snipey anger. It's a sneak it. Uh, it's a sniper anger, and it's the passive aggressive people that you have in your family or that you know. So boundary in myth number six: when I when others set boundaries, it injures me. No, I mean I'm allowed to say no. I that's not what I eat. No, that's not what I do. No, I don't drink that. Um, it has nothing to do, like that is my personal bubble of safety. Myth number seven, boundaries cause feelings of guilt. Well, only if I allow it. I don't need to feel guilty in any way. Myth number eight, boundaries are permanent and I'm afraid of burning my bridges. Oh my gosh. So this is fresh on my mind because of uh, some situations in my family. Okay, so your, your family is going to be where you test this a lot. Mm-hmm. And so um, you're going to have different, in the chapters in here, let me just go back again to the, to the overview. Again, if you have this, great, post below. If you don't have it, go running straight over and buy it on Amazon right now. I, I use this a lot with my clients. Um, why? Because every woman I know needs it. Everybody I know, every man I know needs this. So they, in the beginning of this book, it talks about a day and a boundaryless life. This is where we're willy-nilly everywhere. And we're helping here and we're helping there. And we're such good little, you know, we're people pleasing and we're not making anybody mad. And I've done this for many years and I know you have too. Uh, boundaries are learned and then we, we need to take a look and see, are these the ones that are working for me? Boundary conflicts with your family, your friends, your spouse, your children, your work, yourself, and boundaries with God. And resistance to boundaries, how to measure success with boundaries. So I just, you know, highly recommend you get this. Um, it matters. And, and part of the big brave, the big brave, the big brave in this, in this group and, and in life is 
setting my boundaries and saying that doesn't feel good anymore. Oh my gosh, that doesn't feel good anymore. And um, how do you learn to say that? Well, you learn to say that by practicing it. You learn to say the things that you used to shove in your mouth. And here's the, here's what we want to remember. Eating my words, eating my words means I'm shoving things in. And oftentimes the women I know are eating their words and their food, eating, 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 because we're afraid to set the boundary. And if this is hurting, then you know what? Take action, take action. If you have the book, post below. If you are gonna buy the book today, post below. It also goes along great with the Codependent No More book, which has been out just about as many years. And that one is over here on my shelf. Um, I keep a lot of these books here in my main office. I have a lot out on my uh, in my living room office. I have a whole nother bookshelf in my bedroom. Why? Because this stuff changed my life. Why? This stuff changed my life. I was a counselor for a reason. And I have a counseling degree for a reason. And then I be, I actually wasn't wasn't by my own choice, but I had to move into being a coach. Uh, many of you have heard that story. The story is that a client of mine committed suicide, and this was on June 2nd, 1999. So it has, we have looped around the sun many times since then. But that uh, define, was a defining moment in my career and in my life. And I ended up in a lawsuit for a couple years after that, fighting for my degree, fighting for my license, fighting for my career. And at the very tail end of all that, my license was suspended. And this could have happened to anyone, anyone. And I've been told that a million times by all sorts of people in the counseling world, mental health. And um, I have worked on this deeply, darkly, all which ways. It was again on a conversation that I had this morning with my sponsor. And so that's a part of my story, but it's not the ending. Right? It's a chapter. It's a chapter. And God led me to coaching. God led me to the coaching professor, profession. Kind of like, you know, bringing me around the bend. And it led me to being an entrepreneur. And that led me to creating the National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs. And then selling that for years ago. Uh, why? Because I was starting to feel those feelings of... Uh, this. Sometimes we don't listen. We don't listen to the God nudges that a season has ended. Sometimes there's going to be seasons. There's going to be seasons in your business. There's going to be seasons in the year. There's going to be seasons in your marriage. There's going to be seasons of raising your children. And some of you have had that gift and that's not a gift I've been given. And so that's a, I'm in a, I'm in a different category on that. Um, and was that on my master plan? No, on my master plan, of course I was going to have a child. I was going to have a family. I've had a different kind of family. I've had a different kind of family. Was it on my master plan to get a master's degree and work and then lose that career? The career I had just paid a you know, big batch of money and student loans to be able to work in? No, that was not on my master plan. It was not. It was not on my master plan. There's going to be things that rise up in your life. Most things, a lot of things, that you just didn't have on the vision board. Amen? They were not on the vision board. Um, and learning to set boundaries is a part of that because we're gonna see where we uh, hit up against things and you're gonna start to feel it, okay? So let's talk about when you start feeling cringy, cringy, angry, resentful, fearful, all that stuff. Oh my gosh, if I say this, uh, they're gonna not like me. Oh, all that stuff, you know, and we have to learn how to verbalize it, journal it, whatever we need to do, practice it with safe people. But it's time, it's definitely time for us to rise up, sister. It's time for us to rise up and set the boundaries that we need to keep our heart safe, our mind safe, our my, I have to keep my body safe. And uh, there's pieces to that that are about my um, sobriety from alcohol. There's pieces to that that are part of my sobriety from food and dieting addiction. There is boundaries in my marriage. I'm in a three-year-old marriage. 
And so that's very important to me. There's, I have business boundaries that uh, are very crucial about my phone, about email, about texting, about who can uh, come at me. And uh, that's important too, to keep my safe sanity. I want to be safe, sane, sober, and sassy. And all of those are pieces of this. And I have to enforce it myself. No one is my boundary police. No one is my boundary police. So take good care. Take good care of your boundaries. Post below. I'll post a picture of the book. I highly need you to all at least have a copy. Maybe you have it on Kindle. Maybe you read it 20 years ago. It might be time to revisit it. It just might be time for you to revisit the boundaries book and um, see where that might fit in your journey today. Because we're always evolving. It's always an evolution. Have a good day and uh, happy boundary setting. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.